to the Mumbles Ministry Area Eucharist for today, which is the second Sunday before Lent. As you can see from the little procession of one person up to the high altar there, uh, everything is back in green for these two Sundays, the gap between the end of the season of Epiphany and the beginning of Lent, uh, which of course begins in a couple of weeks' time with Ash Wednesday. More on that later. But we meet, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you, no secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pause and call to mind our lack of love for God, for our neighbour, and indeed for our own true self. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way, to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria this morning is sung for us by our virtual choir. Now and forever. Amen. 
and this is a reading from the letter to the Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is sometimes referred to as Creation Sunday. The, the readings that we have are about creation and the extraordinary nature of creation. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because for some people, it actually becomes a problem for them. Well, how can God actually have created all this? How can he be behind this? And how can he know anything about someone as insignificant and tiny as me? They say, and in one of the things I was reading about, because I do actually read things before um, daring to preach to you uh, each week, it was said that one of the astronauts in, um, who was the first to actually see the, the Earth from space, as he looked down upon it as being a man of the Christian faith, he found that faith then very difficult to, to hold on to because he looked at this beautiful, fragile little blue speck so far away from him in space and thought, how on earth, in the midst of all this, is it that there can be a God who indeed cares for all this? To me, it actually works the other way around. I look and I see around me and I think, how on earth can all this be? A random banging together of atoms over millions, billions of years. I think it's different people see things in different ways, don't they? 
But to me, the extraordinary nature of this beautiful, fragile, wonderful planet that is in the midst of such an enormity where no matter how hard we look, we find it very hard to see that there really is life as we would know it anywhere else. It just simply makes me think, yes, behind this, there indeed must be a creator, a God. I remember also very clearly when I was a young man growing up in London, we were very fortunate to have a retired bishop, a bishop of Nassau in the Bahamas, who came to live in the curate's house, a wise, gentle, kind man. And I remember him saying to me, I've always remembered it, he said, when I was a young man, I used to be very concerned that there was a mind at the centre of all things. As I have grown older, I have become more aware that the important thing is that there is a heart at the centre of all things. As we think about creation, it's good if we can to see its variety, its wonder, and yet by seeing its enormity, to then with the psalmist in Psalm 8 where he talks about how is it that it's all this wonder that you care for me. We have in the Gospels Jesus saying that not even a sparrow falls to the ground without the Father knowing it. That every hair on our head is counted. And I, indeed I can understand how some people can say, oh that is preposterous, how in the midst of this massive universe can we really believe that our heads, the hair on our heads is counted? And yet, I do. And I think thereby that becomes the reason, the spur, the purpose to realise the extraordinary nature of the God that we worship. A God who is indeed the heart of everything. A God who desperately cares and loves us. And by acknowledging the enormity of creation and then realising our part within it, that we are indeed absolutely tiny and yet we are extraordinary. All of us unique, our DNA unique, our fingerprints unique. All of us unique creations loved by God. And it then can flow that we can learn to see that there is a real purpose, that we are part of that purpose, that God indeed has not only created us, but has come and shared our life and our death and wants to share his divine life with us, that there is real meaning and purpose within life itself and that there is a real value for each and every single one of us and for our planet as well. That beautiful fragile planet suspended in the middle of space is not something that can be destroyed and thrown away so that we can all jump in uh, spaceships and go off and, and settle on the moon or Mars or wherever else. This is God's. He wishes to share it with us for us to steward wisely and caringly to learn to look after the planet, the creatures on it and all the people that he has made, treating each person with dignity and respect because each person the hairs on their head are counted. That is surely the real purpose within creation. The loving purpose of God from before time itself. The word was with God and the word was God. And that word is the creative word of love. Shall we reaffirm our faith in the God who made us and all things? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Shall we pray together about these things? Heavenly Father, this morning, we praise you for the wonder of your creation and we pray that you will help us by opening our hearts and our minds to see within that creation your wonder, your power and your love. We thank you for the beauties that surround us. We thank you for the beauties of this part of the world in which we live. And we thank you also for the wonders of what human beings have done in your name for the splendour and the majesty of this building that helps us to centre upon your splendour and majesty. But as we think of these things, and think of your transcendent power and beauty, Father. We pray that we may be aware that you are imminent and close to us. May we be aware that even as we are precious and the hairs on our head are counted, may that give us the insight and the courage to accept that each and every person we meet is just as precious in your sight. Those we love and those we find it hard to love and those we do not know. Father, help us to treat all people with love and decency and respect. Father, we pray for the nations of the world We pray for leaders everywhere, bringing before you particularly all those as they come to make decisions in relation to coronavirus, but also all the other issues that affect our human race. And we pray also, especially at this time, for all those who seek to conserve our planet to lead men and women away from the misuse of the beautiful resources that you have given to us. May we learn to sustain and to use with generosity, but also with wisdom and care the wonders of this beautiful planet, that we may pass it on to our children and our children's children. May we stop seeing the planet and people and things as being disposable. And so far we pray for people everywhere we pray for people who do not have freedom, for people who are used by others for their own ends and purposes. We pray for those who are seen as being disposable, as collateral damage in war. We pray for those who cry out, whose voice is not listened to. Father, may we learn to hear the cries of the poor and the weak and the oppressed and to do something about them. 
Heavenly Father, we bring before you those whom we know to be in times of difficulty or danger, times of change, times of stress, for those who are ill, for those who are sad and lonely, for those who are bereaved. May they know that the hairs on their head are also counted, that they are precious to you. And may we be open to be used by you to bring your healing love and your care to all who are in need of any kind. We pray finally, Father, for those we love but see no longer. And we thank you that not only have you created this beautiful planet, but in your Son have shared our life and death, and through him promise to share with us your divine life in his kingdom, which shall have no end even Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, in whose name we ask these prayers. Amen. Jesus said, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We now have our offertory hymn, Thou whose almighty word Father, 
heavenly King, almighty everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He is your eternal Word. Through him you created the universe and formed us in your own image. You sent him to be our Saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Through him you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we praise your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Our choir now sing for us our communion hymn. Today and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.